I just flew into Ohio to pick up this 1971 Chevrolet Chevelle that I bought sight unseen. First time I'm seeing it is right now. See, I retired my other Chevelle from events, but I still want to do some drag racing, drag and drive events, and other events. So I did the right thing and snagged up this one. I was turned into a drag car in the 90s. It doesn't run and has been sitting off the road for years. The plan is, I don't have one. But I do need to get this running and drive it 450 miles back home. Or at least try. It's on drag radials and front runners. <laughs> Great. Well, if a guy's going on ahead and being honest here, this car, <laughs> too nice for me. It's shiny, it scares me an awful lot. But don't panic, okay? Let, just let me panic. I shouldn't panic either. What I'm saying is, we're not going to throw this into the burnout competition in the burnout pits. It's way too nice for that, at least what I can see already. I'm thinking more street strip car, drag and drive events. The power cruises, the power tours, the cruising the coast stuff. That would be fun. And we'll do something else for, you know, a burnout kind of competition vehicle. Well, we got to get on it. Let's walk around this thing, you know, climb on it like a billy goat. See what we have, see what we're working with. And just get on this thing, see if we can get it fired up. We've got 450 miles to go and it's supposed to rain the next couple days. And while we're on Mickey Thompson's and some old skinny front runners. That's going to be fun. And no windshield wipers. Perfect. <laughs> Guy's got ignition sticks and a door slash trunk stick. That's pretty good. I'm actually the third owner of this rig. The story goes the feller that had it before me, actually I know because I saw the title, he bought it in 1977. So this car was pretty near new back then. He was 17 years old. He had it for 45 years. And looks like he took pretty good care of it. I'm going to go out on a limb right now. Easy. And say that it was repainted. Pretty positive. We'll find out in a minute. I'm going to start the trunk. I'd like to see if there's any body parts. Like fenders and stuff. You know. Or engine parts, heads, water pumps. Whatever. See what a guy is in for. Trying to get something running on the power bar in there. What is... What is this? Okay. Ouch. There goes the big toe. Oh. Huh. Would you look at that? Uncharacteristically clean for vehicles I'm buying. And I'm used to seeing Chevelles with nothing back here at all. So this is kind of refreshing. Got, uh, you know, it's a battery. Sure. Obviously got a roll bar in it. Got power. Must be a power switch or something over there. Definitely been repainted. All the stickers are gone. I can see the sandings and stuff in here, but man, she is clean. Really clean. Nice rubber gasket around her. Don't see a lick of rust in this. Anywhere. This car has been in Ohio his whole life, so She's been garaged up for sure. Well, great news. No engine parts, no nothing like that. Fantastic. Nice color blue. Kind of looks like a factory color. I guess we can find out in a minute. Kind of reminds me of that, like, uh, Ascot blue. We'll look at the trim tag here pretty soon, but the body on this is in really good shape. Quarters were rolled. Starting right about there to there. Got some Sportsman Senses SS. The old Mickey Thompson's. Them are locked in too. See? Got some center line wheels on here, old school center lines. 12 fives. I'm guessing, yep. 
29 by 12, 5 by 15. We'll crawl under the rear here in a second. Got some bubbling here and there, but really minor. That's what a rocker panel looks like, I guess, on these cars. That's pretty neat. No rust up here either. We've got some, what are these? Moroso Drag Special. Sure, they're like seven and a half by 15. Looking pretty old, not for highway use, says who. We're definitely gonna have to see if they are for getting home. Front looks great. Blacked out grill. It's pretty cool. Got the hood pins, the bulge hood. Gaps are halfway decent. You know, along the rig. This side is equally as gooder. Oh boy. Yeah. That's that's gonna be sketchy. Great. I don't really see I mean, don't have the best lighting in here, but even scratches or anything. I guess there's a couple there. Probably from the buckle. A few dings. Beautiful car. Oh, that might wash out yet. No, there's, I think those are scratches. But all four tires are holding wind. That's good news. A few dings in the roof. Not bad. What do we got? Fuel pressures. Sure. Winders are down. Time to see if I fit in this thing. There is none smell. She's been neutralized. I think that's a first for me. Here we go. All right. Yep. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. He was definitely a short feller. See, I can't see anything but the, but the roof, basically, and the knees are in the dash. Great. Oh no, does that mean this whole bar is gonna have to be moved? Perfect. Well, if a guy does get her running at home, we got some work to do. The seats are way too high and way too far forward. My knees are about here. And the head is in the headliner. Well, you can see my marks, actually. Which is in remarkable condition, if I'm being honest. Not used to that either. See, in the independent Chevelle, the bar is much farther back. Because I was the one that put it in, of course. And we had the seat laid in there, but we'll see what we can do. Terrier is stripped down, like a Miley Cyrus video. Not a lot in here. We've had some sort of, you know, pop rivet floor patch there another one up here basically she's got custom floors is what i'm saying this is interesting that reminds me of uh not a malibu door panel hmm pretty decent back firewall there it's got a custom dash in her with a bunch of i don't know fighter jet switches what happens that must be start. It's momentary. Probably ignition fuel. No idea, no idea, no idea, no idea, no idea. Temp, oil pressure, and the ripums. Whoa. He was spinning this thing to 6,800 RPM. Okay, now I really want to see what's under the hood. Full ventilation mode. I think that lowers your ET, maybe. Basically, the whole dash. Holy smokes. Looks like the International Space Station over there. Let's go check that out. I opened the door and a bunch of wood chips came rolling out. This must have sat in that feller's garage right next to a wood lathe or something. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but confirms she was garaged. <coughs> Anywho's, what in the devil? We got an MSD Multi Sparks. It's an old 6200 with the blaster box. I that's gonna take a minute to digest what is going on, basically. Okay, I guess the passenger can be beep booping on the digitals while you're going down the road, like the olden days. 
You just crawl up under there. Plenty of room. Audio Magic. That's the old slam stick this is. Shifter by the Hearst, you know. What is this? Oh, I bet that. Could that be a trans brake? I wonder if that was taped on there at one point. Could be. Could very well be. I wonder if we can get a more accurate date looking at these belts. Said it was kind of parked in the 90s deal. Whoa! 1988 August. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, she hasn't been down the track in a long time. This is pretty cool. It's like a time capsule. If the guy's doing his math magicianals right, you know, divide by 16, multiplied by 12, carry the 3%, bring her down. Yeah, 34 years it's been since this was at the track. Or at least you would assume most tech inspections immediately look at the belts for the SFI on there. And those last about two years, so if it expired in 88, he was running this in 86 ish, 85, 86, less than 10 years after he bought the car. It's pretty wild. So it's been uh, just sitting for a long, long time. Anywho, let's get under here. It's supposed to be a small block. Well, do they still got her lap? Oh, they do. And pinned. Huh. That's different. <laughs> oh, there she is. Well, according to the lie detector, this little mouse spins almost 7,000 RPM. The inner fender wells are all of it. Uh, they're actually laying on the ground right over there. And I got a box of parts. Uh, feller was in the midst of swapping out the fuel, make it happeners, never finished that up. The old one's in the box. I got the original armrests. I think the original taillight lens, which I'm assuming that's where the shutoff is now couple other parts the original visors pretty cool oh new spark relators in there too they were unplugged right now i like the blue and the white mixed up socks on the lightning hoses there oh got a fuel pressure regulator running up here gonna have to do some plumbing custom brackets why is that no accessory on the head, there is on this side. We got double hump heads. That's a good sign. Another custom bracketry on the PS pump. Ooh, we got a spark lighter socket. Front pocket fine. All right, we got a Victor Junior intake. It's got headers, obviously. MSD finished under here. Old school looking overflow bottle. Looks like stock rad that's just been busted and fixed on 3,000 times. Still running drum drum brakes. Oofta. Look at that. There she is. So there's a line lock. Maybe not a trans brake. That's probably what that button is. All right. It's all here though. We got completage, fellers. We got completage. Kind of just dawned on a guy as I was rooting around under the hood here, you know, this just in. Started adding some stuff up here. Listen, hear me out. Blacked out grill front here. We got hood pins, but still with the factory latch. We got the domed hood, and we've got door panels that also resemble a heavy Chevy Chevelle. Now, those would have been wood grain back in the days, but they've been reupholstered. Those are all of the mixins for a heavy Chevy Chevelle. Now, I can't be certain we're missing some clues, like it's been repainted, the stripe is gone, the interior is gutted, so we can't see a lot there, but all of that screams heavy Chevy Chevelle. That was a two-year only deal. 71, they made like 6,700 and change, and I think 72, they made like 9,000 and change, but that was it, just two years. Similar to like a Pontiac T37, they were a performance package that Chevrolet put together. It was kind of a budget car. So you got some cool things, 
but then they based a lot of other stuff. But there's a very good chance this is a heavy Chevy, and those bring a premium over the base model, so we got really lucky there. I'm going to dig into the trim tag here a little bit and whew, spin the old decoder ring around, see if we can figure out what else we got going on here. Oh yeah, look at this. This is handy. Okay, 71. You don't say, we got a 71 Chevelle. Trim is 724, 724, 724. That's a medium blue bench. Would also back up a heavy Chevy. This looks like an Arlington trim tag, I'm being honest. It's skinny, narrower. Paint is 24, 24. That is Ascot blue. So it is a repaint, and the hood's been replaced. But this is kind of the original color-ish. Error. So that's pretty cool. Boy, these brakes. Oh, we got a blown out wheel cylinder or something over here, too. Great. Just great. Well, let me hang on to the light. I'm going to root around on the small block a little bit more. We're going to have to see if it rotates here in a minute. That's the most important thing. So if it doesn't, uh oh, we're going to have to start devisolating what we're going to do here. Any hoops. You know how the old drag racing stories go. Apparently there's a photograph somewhere of this thing jumping a Coke can. And if this is the small block that did it, I gotta, I gotta understand what's going on. You know what I mean? So let's go over there and see if we could find the block casting number, figure out what this is, most likely a 350, and it's got internal work. But, you know, got the receipts. You know, we can also pull a valve cover and start rooting around on this. Need to figure out transmission, 350, 400. I don't know, power glide? Probably a power glide. Not sure. Also, the rear end, hopefully, we got a 12 bolt. We could scoot under there, you know, take a look at that as well. Let's start with the casting, see what we got. I don't know the etiquette on shiny. Am I supposed to lay something over this fender? Watch the buttons. Watch the buttons. All right, I'm going to try to find the casting number if it's clean enough. It sure is. Oh, three nine five one five eleven. No, three nine five one five eleven. Yes. Oh, that's great. Our luck continues. <laughs> Guys, we've got a four hundred small block in here with double hump heads and all of the fixings. She could be putting out some HPs if she's got some compression hooked into her. You know, that's really good news. Now I'm really fired up. Let's see if we can roll this over by hand. It's got a mechanical fan on it. Should be able to almost cut my fingers in half and rotate this thing. We'll also get a taste of compression since all the sparkulators are in. This may not even work if she really is hopped up, but let's see if I can get my hand on a blade here. Oh, okay. Oh, um. Oh, there, it barely moved. Quarter of an inch. There, it barely moved again. Well, it's not locked up, but boy, that is either really, really, really tight or it does have a lot of compression. Wow. Ouch. Well, it does rotate. Normally I like to go 360 degrees, but that's all I've got right now. Probably gonna have to put a ranch on her down there. And you know what I mean? Before we jam the starter through the flex plate down there. You know, that's a, that's, we'll make that a plan. But we'll pin that up for now. We'll come back to this in a minute. Let's try to figure out what transmission we got what rear end we got. I'd also like to scan the underside of this thing and make sure there's not any angle iron and side of a refrigerator holding this thing together. That would be nice. Well, the guy's got her up, you know, I think high enough anyway, I can scoot my belly underneath. I'll leave the jack in so, you know, emergency personnel can get my body out faster. But 
I'm going to try to help us understand what's going on under here. Transmission, rear end-ish, exhaust-ish, and uh, rust situation. Hopefully not bad. It did not crunch when I did that. So that's good. All right, coming in under the drinker side. Headers. Oh, can't really see much back there. Let's see, transmission. That is a 350. Surprisingly, a TH350. Oh, wow. Look at the tiny little torque converter. So she's got a performance torque converter in her. Well, that's for sure. Here's the fuel line. Going into some rubber line. That'll leak like crazy. That must be battery. Main battery. Floor looks kind of decent over here. Drive shaft's had a little work. Oh, it's got a drive shaft hoop in her or loop. Maybe she was scooting pretty good. Whoa, we've got some we've got some stuff going on back here. Let me uh let me crawl into the rear. Now this is really cool. We're looking at a lot of history here. Some old school drag racing tech. The trailing arms have a pipe in them, welded up, basically reinforcing these or essentially boxing them in so they don't twist on hard launches. And then look at these ladder bars. They almost look homemade. And the hardware is backing off. Yeah, we'll ignore that for now. But that's tied in over here, over to here, boxed in up here. You know, they make kits of these now. There's several companies that have nice little bracketry and stuff, but back in the day, you just figured it out. This thing was actually legitimately set up. And I bet you they're not gonna do that unless that's a 12 bolt, but we'll try to crawl under the rear. And I also see some kind of sump tank situation going on. These barely have any tread. So that's good, you know. Another fuel fitting. Remember where that's at so when it leaks, we can come right back to it. The captain side floor pan definitely was rotted out. The rear floor pan was rotted out. So for some reason, or is that an old torch? That might be an old school torch cut. But why would it take such a big chunk? Not quite sure. Well, here's some uh, metal work where they boxed around the around the roll bar there that was stick welded in. That's fine. Pretty neat old rig. Guy had her set up. Lots more old school goodness back here. Absolutely a 12 bolt. We've got the old Gabriel hijackers, air shocks. And look at this, they took the original tank and made their own sump system. We got a Holly, problem, well, looks like a blue. Boy, these lines are just brittle. Old filter set up, Ooh, hello, that was a little loose, okay. And no rust anywhere that's for the bar coming in up there wow well luck is finally on a guy's side it's most likely a heavy chevy and it's got a 400 small block never even asked just assume 350 383 it's got a turbo 350 in there it's got a torque converter it's got exhaust it's got a 12 bolt with all the rear end stuff I mean, she was hopped up. This was a legit street strip car back in the, well, late 80s. But now, guys got to get her back on the road. And if it's going to be a drag and drive car, we got to see if it drives first. We've still got 450 miles. I got to start digging into this thing. So we know we got electric fuel pumping later. Got to do some plumbing up here. Figure out this new fuel, make it happen here. Uh, we still got to check fluids, do all of that stuff. 
Real quick, I'm going to pull a valve cover off of this, see if we got any goodies under there. Maybe we got some roller tip rockers, could just be stamped steel. Um, and then we just got to start crossing some things off the to-do list that I refuse to make because then it holds me accountable. Great. This is just more curiosity than necessity. I want to see what we got under here. This would give us some indication. Normally if someone puts time and money into a valve train and they've got some pistons in it and obviously a camshaft and all that stuff. Painted? Edel broken. I think they're painted. I can't see very good anymore. Fuel pressure must be. I can see the oil pressure still hooked up. Will our luck continue? Oh, yes, it will. Wow. And it's really clean. <laughs> Might be a mighty mouse. Well, fellers and fellettes, look at this. It's definitely built. I mean, we've got valve springs, I'm sure valves. We got aluminum roller rockers. They're locked up. It's got guide plates in it. No reason to believe it wouldn't have a performance camshaft. I'm sure the compression is brought up, you know, built to the max back in the day. So that's pretty interesting. I wonder how many horses this thing makes. I don't know. Maybe we should if we get it running and back home. Maybe we put this thing on the dyno. And see what it was putting out. Well, the guy's got to stop playing around here. I'm going to throw this valve cover back on. Need to see if this engine rotates. So I'm going to get a hot battery in this. Start flipping buttons and switches. Figure out which is fuel so we can keep that cut. Ignition, we keep that cut. Just want to roll it over right now. Make sure everything sounds good, looks good. Maybe we can even try to build some oil pressure. And we can keep moving here. I was going to check on the oil before I started turning this thing over and oddly enough the checker stick tubey thingy isn't plugged. It's just completely gone. So I'm going to have to pick one of those up. But listen, it's going to change the oil anyway. So I'm going to do that now just to make sure that obviously there's something in it. We'll cross that off the list and then while I'm scooting under there I'll try to get a wrench on the crank there. Rotate this over a little bit more and just make sure none of the valve train is binding up or anything like that And well that we don't have a you know rod trying to make a window or something It's, it's we got to make sure it's gonna work before we hit the start button or the switch or the lever I also just noticed this power steering pulley cattywampus belts touching the other pulley and the charging whirler look at the bend in that the likelihood of that keeping a belt on and this one not rubbing itself off is, well, unlikely. It probably worked a quarter of a mile at a time, you know, but we've got a lot more to go than that. Yeah, it's probably going to take, I don't know what to do there. I might have to grind that bolt or that nut. Bring this in to bring this around. I don't know. Maybe it just works somehow. See what we got going on for Earls. Well, it's there. Zero metal. That's good news if there was to be news. We got a purulator. Yep, purulator filt tray hanging on up there. Got a drain plug in the trans pan. He was mantenancing on it. Also good news. Kind of a look from down below here. Lower rat hose seems to be pretty decent. It's had some upgraded bushings on the sway bar, different shock relators with miscellaneous bolts of various lengths. That's fine. Boy, it took me everything I had with this little rinky dink wrench. Get this filter off. She was smoked on there. See there, it hasn't run in a long time. 
hasn't built any oil pressure. Nothing special there. Looking good. Throw a Wix back up in here and get some oil in it. Filter is in, drain plugs in. Since we know we got a performance engines, guys got to go buy the most expensive oil he could find that says race and flags on it. No, I'm going to put in this T4 heavy duty diesel oil. It's got 1200 ppm. All the dinosaurs and vitamins these old rigs like. Oh, yeah. Drink up, little fella. And to top her off, we're going to put some of this in here. It says, oil alone is not enough. Okay. Stop yelling. Helps with dry starts. Things like that, apparently. You ever play with those gear things on the counter? Where you, you know, conventional oil, with, and there's, it's impressive. I don't know if they're tricking on us or not, but... Well, how do you, is this hermetically sealed? There we go. Not a whole lot, just, you know, this much. No, let's go this much. There we go. Boy, you can tell it's cold out. Whew. I should have mixed that with the engine earl. Too late. <sighs> Found a beach towel in here. Cover up the fender. Not used to having to operate one of these. You know, I'm gonna check the blood stick here on the shift machine. Make sure that's not. Oh boy, plum full, way full, bright red. So that's good. Don't want to fire this up or be spinning on it without any juice burned them pumps up. You know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, coil wire is unhooked for some reason. I should verify. Yeah, like that one's not even on the sparkulator. Neither is that one. What's going on here? I'm gonna go around and snug up all these boots. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Can't wait to hear this header leak. It's gonna be great. Ran down and picked up some parts. Happened to get a uh, Earl checker right off the performance wall there. We'll slam this in. Right there. There we go. Well, I thought I had pressed this right in. But it was sitting funky, wasn't really seating. And uh, monkeyed around with it for a while. I was putting vice grips around this, trying to seat it and stuff like that. Even snipped it on the ends and made this more conical to try to go in. Still wouldn't go. Ah, I've seen this before, I said to me. The other one is snapped off. Boop. In the block. Great. This is not going to fit. So we're going to have to deal with that later. I'm going to set this right on the intake so I don't forget, but that's something we'll have to address at some point. I mean, to get home, we could just silicon it up, but I'd like to be able to check on it, you know, as much as possible. All right, we got juice in the go forward, go backward shift machine. We got Earl in it, new fill tray. We should be safe to roll this thing over with the starter. So we can go back, get a hot battery on this thing, and then operation, what do these switches do? Can commence. I'm excited. Should have brought a Sharpie. Label these bad boys. See if I could snag on this old battery. That ain't got a go handle, so it's not very, you know, handy. Out. In. Go handle. Very specific reason. I bought this. No, it's just a handle, basically. That's, I can't bend right around this rig, you know. Can't see nothing. Pretty decent little battery tray setup in here. 
if I must say so myself. Used to having all the fuels and whatnot right in my face, but the standard tank back there with the sump in it, pretty sweet idea. Not too shabby for something like a Dragon Drive event. Got tons of capacitors. All right, is this the, ooh, I even got the right posts on the right side. I mean, they all got the positive and the sad one. You know, you know what I'm saying. Is this a lucky guess, if I'm being honest? Sure. Wow. I can never get these caps off without a Battle Royale. Ah! Gotta put adapter Roonies on this battery. See, it's was running. I can't set anything down on a shiny car. Was running one of these, and I see these a lot. But these are chintzy, and they always bend right at this tab stop it so I run these superstars these are actually marine terminals but they work fantastic because the leg is actually attached to the clamp clamp side anyway they're better they don't bend that's what I'm so I'm trying to tell you right now oh I'm gonna have to get a gas jug go get some gas Quite a bit to do yet, but I just, if I can hear this engine roll over, I'm going to feel so much better. Okay, I can't touch the paint. That's in and done. Everything's nice and tight. I had to scooch her, just cheat it over a little bit this way. This is just a smidge short, but that should work now. Kick the power on. Do a fire test. <sighs> just gonna kinda hang out here for a minute and just scan. Make sure nothing gets smoky or melty. Quite a bit going on for, you know, an analog rig. I mean, he got a lot of digitals. Oh, he's got the lights hooked up in there even. Like the indicator or warning lights or whatever these we're gonna have to figure out what that is look at the brake pedal he really was a short guy that must have kicked out so he could reach it or something wow i think we're good i don't smell anything well let me check yeah i don't smell anything power's hot on the trunk i don't think this is going to do anything nope okay so then one would assume probably fuel, ignition, and then, you know, that's fire. Go. I don't know. Oh. Dash lights. Oh, it's got headlights. I'll be dipped. Well, there's that. We can cruise at night, I guess. I don't, I don't know what that does. Okay, that's, that's fuel pump. That's, okay. It's kind of weird. Ignition, probably. Light's not lighting up. I don't know what, probably going to have to do a lot of, tracing okay here we go in the park nothing um nothing oh there it is so that one has to be up for whatever reason let's see if it turns over then Oh, it's tight. It's going. Let's see if we can build some oil pressure. Come on, oil pressure. Oof, I don't like that at all. Is it fully? No, it's. 
Be nice to get some oil pressure before we try to fire. There it goes. Oh, quite a bit. No. Okay. Over 50 pounds on crank. Uh, so uh, the bearings are either too tight, something wrong, or it's a really good engine. I've never had the third, so it's too bad they upholstered this, the wood grain. I mean, it looks nice white, but I don't know, maybe some white stripes or something. Anyway, we figured out what one, two, four of the 19 switches do. So that's pretty good. Oh, blinkers. Do we have blinkers when the lights are on? No. Can't have everything. Well, maybe that's what this switch is. No blinkies. That's all right. Well, guys, scooting down the list here. We figured out some of the switches. The engine rotates with the starter, which is great. Did you hear how it was a little tight in the beginning there? That's why I usually like to roll them over with the wrench or by hand, just to make sure that they're not stuck. You don't bind something or bend something up. But it's free, it's rotating, it's building fantastic oil pressure. We found the fuel pump later switch, which is great. Tank's empty, probably also good because we would have fuel everywhere. I need to do some plumbing up front, get the new fuel make it happener plugged in essentially. And once we do, if we get it running, we're gonna have to adjust on that because out of the box, Holly's pretty good at being close. We're probably gonna have to set the floats and do some other things. First, get it plumbed in, Get some fuel in this, make sure the pump's working. We're getting fuel up front. I'm gonna dig through the box of parts, see if I can't find, this must have been hard plumbed in to the last fuel make it happen. Or I found the box that's in, I wonder if that's where this pipe or hose or whatever. I just need this fitting at minimum and then we can get this plumbed in. Looks like she's bolted up pretty good. Might need to run the digital choke on her. Yep, or wire it open, one of the two. That seems fine. It's not binding up or anything, so. A to C, beep boop B. Looks like there was a main old double pumper on her before. Big unit, but I did find, here it is. This is the fitting I need. So, let's see if we can get that. Boop. Some way or another. I might just have to cut it and go rubber because this is not quite jiving the way I want it to. Yeah, we don't want it to go there, I don't think. Hmm. Found a vice in this hacksaw. Just been giving her. A couple more hours. Should have this cut real nice. Trying to get this fuel line in quick. And basically, I'm gonna throw in a fill tray up here. We got one in the rear, but just in case, doubly sure, I'm gonna throw this one in as well. And that whole fill tray system could end up leaking or who knows what kind of issue we have with that. So I'm just gonna plop one in up front. We can keep our eyes on it a lot better. It doesn't have a Wix in stock, but a MicroGuard 33003 is it's exactly the same thing. Let's just say that. Okay, here we go. Throw this in up here. Even got blue clamps. That's pretty slick. No, I just can't stand using a screwdriver for seven days tightening clamps. So that's why I get these. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Sure. Here we go. I need to get a zip tie or something to keep that back in line. You know what I mean? I think this feller's probably got one laying around here I can borrow on for a while. Right there I see the wooden hatch says ties. That ought to work just fine. Good enough for the girls we date anyway. Okay, ran down, got a fuel jug. Got fresh fuel in that. You know, first time for everything, I guess. Gonna go back, dump that in. Then we'll flip the fuel pump on. And if all goes well, no leaks. We'll see it come up here. We'll fill the bowls. Might even adjust on those just to tackle first. 
But what's probably going to happen is every piece of rubber from here back is just going to blow apart and disintegrate. Great. I'll tell you a thing or two about a thing or four. If you own an A body, you also own a fuel funnel. I ain't kidding. There we go. Oh, easy. Whoa, settle down. Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, I don't have a ton in there, but I think I've got enough to run the pump later and at least start figuring out which 42 pieces of rubber line and 17 fittings we need to fix. Perfect. All right, fuel pump. Hasn't changed tones yet. Still hasn't. I hear weird noises in the back. I need to prime that. I bet I do. Could have some air in there. Oh, there it went. Come on. There we go. I'm gonna crack this. Probably a good amount of air. Well, just being stubborn. Not a lot of leaks. See? Hmm. Well, the guy wasn't building pressure. The pump wasn't happy. So what I was doing was I got a little bit of fuel up here. I'd unhook it and I'd blow it backwards into the pump. Turn the pump on, bring it back this way. Going back and forth. Now it's starting to build pressure, but the pump sounds like a dying coyote. It's not happy. The weird noises. The regulator is also leaking severely. This is leaking. I can fix that quick. And the bowls are way off. Sight glass is just plumb full. Blew them right out as expected. But we're getting fuel up here. That's that's pretty neat, I guess. Let's start working through this here. Let's see. Bring these floats down a tickle. They're on full send mode. I'm gonna try there. Right? Sure. Yeah, right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Need to find an Allen key for that. I think for that. They're leaking there or this cheap casting. <clears throat> Oh yeah. See, she's plumbed in for, you know, a guy wonders. I could, let me see, could a guy, I wonder if this is the same size fitting. Hmm. I don't understand. Moses sandals. No, I think that's maybe that's different. I don't know. Let's find out. What I'm trying to tell you guys is we could put the fuel pressure gauge back in line. That's the wrong thing. No, it's not. I'll be dipped. But now I gotta go get copper line. So this here is the fitting off the old fuel setup here, which went to that big Haas double pumper, which then went into this, which goes into the fuel pressure gauge that flops around up there on the windscreen. So now we'll have fuel pressure because I'm pretty positive this needs to be replaced. Seals blown out, fuels, it's leaking fuel, stuff like that. Also, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to replace this with copper line because I don't necessarily like fuel spraying up on the windshield if then that were to catch on fire. Copper is kind of the way to go, if possible. So, I think we need another parts run. 
75th trip in town. That's fine. Nope, wasting time. Anyway, I got to get tires anywho. Okay, these are dry rotted on the inside. They're done, completely shot. So I just learned this. There's a Jags in town. Well, like 40 minutes from here or something like that. So I'm going to pick up some front runners and then Moz will go ahead and pick up that regulator because we're going to need one of them too. And it would be advantageous to buy another Holly pump, keep the receipts because if we don't use it, we'll return it. Maybe get some copper piping and I'll think of a couple other things on the way there. So let's jump in the rental, go for another drive, pick up some more parts. Plan. Boy, it was dangerous coming in here. Should have left the wallet in the rental, but we got front runners going with the Mickey Thompson Sportsman's. It's going to match, you know, the dry rotted ones in the rear. So that's pretty neat. Got uh, some hood pins, thread sealant. They're in the back right now. Finding a pump. I'm going to wander around to see what else what kind of trouble I can get into here. Back in the garage, fun little field trip. Got a few items, we'll say. Really expensive t-shirt is what I'm telling Jessica, you know what I mean? Anyway, got a blue pump. These come with the regulator somewhere in here. There she is. So I'm gonna pop this one out that's leaking. Pop this one back in. We'll get fuel pressure up in there because we're gonna have to adjust this new one. Not sure what it's going to be at out of the box, but probably a little too hot. These run like 13, 14 PSI. Could be wide open. Anyway, we'll adjust that. And then we've got our fuel system, I think, taken care of as long as that old pump hangs in there. It was making an awful lot of racket, but the good news is for the trip, we've got an extra one right here. So up next is the fuel pressure gauge here. I got her dissected just a scoosh so I can get to the fitting here, but this is the remainder of the line that I already cut, but you see my fingers here, it's chalky and it's really starting to deteriorate and break down from the fuel. So I'm gonna put in this copper line here and I like to do this whenever possible, even for the oil. This stuff here just always melts and leaks and causes more fires and XYs and it's a mess. So I'm going to try to run this through there, get her into our fuel supply. Over there we borrowed that fitting from the old setup and get this pump back up quick. see any leaks anywhere. Might put a couple temporary permanent zip ties on that. Have to make a couple more adjustments, but I just got her down to seven and a half, somewhere around there. Probably should work for now, any hoops. Well, I think we're to the point here. Guy just needs to crank on this thing and see if we got fire in the hole. It's getting pretty darn late and I'm in the middle of a neighborhood. I don't want to be cranking on this thing at, you know, midnight, 1 a.m. Haven't officially tested Spark. Normally I'd get in there and test the coil and all that stuff, but we're going to know right away, I guess, either way. Pretty sure this old girl, if and when it fires, is going to be rowdy. So I'm going to jump in, flip a bunch of switches, do dabs, twirl this over, See if we can make some noise. All right. Gonna have to baby the throttle. If it tries to fire, it's really cold out. That seems like park. A couple shots of fuel. 
Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? Incredible. 60 pounds of oil pressure, more than that. Almost 70. Go ahead and get the fuel pump on. A couple more shots. Carb is way wrong. <laughs> oh man, I'm excited. Oh, she's definitely cammed up. Yes. Woo. She is a smoky. <laughs> Zero hesitation. I hit that switch, took right off. Sounds really good. Must have them pop can mufflers. What are they called? Flow masters or something, I don't know. Amazing oil pressure. Fuel pressure looks fine, of course, we just fixed that. The carb is not even remotely close. And that's part of the problem right now. You need to wire up a choke, you need to uh, adjust the floats. We might even have to put some different jets in this thing. We went from a big old double pumper. Actually, we might be able, okay, it's dumping too much fuel right now, so we're going the other direction. I think we'll be just fine. I do need to run down and get a vacuum gauge, some wire, wire stripper. I don't, I don't have any of that. And whilst doing that, I'm going to let this place air out. Oh man, sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. I can't wait to drive this thing now. I got no brakes. I never got brakes. Well, a guy just ran down to the Hardmore store and back and was thinking on it. I'm probably going to wait to dial in the fuel, make it happen and all that. So we got a couple day, two, three days of driving, hopefully. We didn't dial that in and as we go. Shouldn't be anything that difficult, you know. But, brakes. I accidentally, yeah, I accidentally hit the pedal when I was in there and straight to the floor, came back up, almost hit me in the teeth. We got nothing. So I think, let's try to address that. And I already see show you in a second. Got a wheel cylinder, looks like it's been dripping on the tire and stuff like that. So I got a wheel cylinder, I got a rubber line. I think I'm gonna dig in, replace that stuff. And hopefully that master cylinder is good. I did just order one just in case. That'll be here tomorrow morning. If I don't need it, I'll just return it. I think 9.55 is when that comes in. Hopefully the master cylinder is good. It just can't build pressure with a blow it up wheel cylinder. But Gonna get the captain's side up in the air, start digging in the brakes. Yes! Favorite! No. See these marks? Pretty good indication that the wheel cylinders blow it out. Also, see how that drum is fairly dry? Look at this one. She's pretty juiced up, so again, I think likely that wheel cylinder is shot regularly it doesn't look that bad to be honest so let's dig in comes off definitely needs cleaned up but look at this more evidence brake fluid over everything bearings feel good not too bad. Already has the extended studs on here as well, which we need for certain classes or speeds anyway. I don't got any more shoes, so I'm going to rebuild these. And by that, I just mean, and hopefully the wheel cylinder is the right one. Probably try to replace this line unless it gets really dicey in there. It'd be nice to get it replaced.
wheel cylinders in, rubber line is in. Everything went pretty smooth other than wrestling this little devil off down there, but no broken fittings. That's the most important part. This is really cool. Notice this. That is Ascot Blue. That's the repaint. I'm assuming this was a frame off restoration. Everything is painted really nice in here. There's tape over all the wires, which is really common scene when you have a frame off. Also, look at this. That's really cool. GM tag. So I gotta clean up the drum, get that on, and this side's done. Breaker side, buttoned up as well. New soft line, new wheel cylinder. Had to adjust the wheel bearing on this side. Gonna have to keep an eye on that. Had a little bit of waller in her. Ticked her over one, locked it back down, and it seems to be doing wheel bearing things. I think this drum is a little bit warped. Something going on there, but maybe she'll self-clearance as we go down the road. Fronts are done, but not going to put the tires back on because we've got to get the new tires mounted probably first thing in the morning. So I'm going to load those up in the rental. I'm trying to think what else I could tick off this late at night that's not going to cause a bunch of rutkus and commotion. You know what I mean? Well, now that the juice pipes are in and the wheel cylinder is, I'm going to pop the lid off of the master over there. Get in and start stomping around with the earth pounder and just see what happens. And also, listen for that dreaded sound. Sss. Sss. You've heard it if you've been around with me for a while. Every time. Thankfully, this one seems like it's been garage kept from day 7, maybe 14. So, maybe that's not going to be the case. But I want to see what that master cylinder is doing. Again, we got the one ordered. It's going to be here tomorrow, but... All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hip. Easy. Oh, she's stuck. Oh, there's... There's a little bit of juice in there. Hello. Ooh, we got lots of gunk in the bottom, though. Yeah, I'm going to clean that out. Well, I did have a bunch of floaties and stuff in it, but I think I got her cleaned out fairly decent. Top her off here. We'll climb in and shoot that juice through the pipes and see where it sprays out. I'm getting nothing. Even though they need blood, normally they'll build a little bit of pressure. Hey, we got juice on this side. But the bad news is, it's a little squiggly cue pipe. <sighs> Great. Let's see if I can MacGyver this. It is starting to build the pedal. Right there. I can't tell if that's the tape on the pedal I keep hearing or something leaking. It is building pressure though. Any juice? Well, I'll be dipped. This frame, by the way, slightly better than the independent Chevelle's frame. Boy, them guys are tucked in there, aren't they? Well, the guy is making a little bit of progress on the brakes here. Is this grass seed? Yep. Anyway, I'm gonna try to grab some help in the morning bleeding those quick. Unless I can find like a water bottle and some hose, I can probably get it myself. But we're in a pretty good situation with the brakes. Cross your, cross your fingers and your toes. But we're going to switch gear to the previous gear before we change gears to the current gear. Go back to fuel make it happen or wiring on electro digital choke assist. I think all I got to do is hook a cord in to 12 volt switched or something like that. 
and then the choke's going to start doing that thing and that's going to help our drastic flooding situation we had earlier when we fired this bad boy up because it is late late and I don't want to make a bunch of racket tonight just trying to do some little stuff well I mean I don't I don't have a time keep that's what I'm saying but it could be early depending on how we're looking at it here I I have no sense of I have no sense of time apparently well, what I learned here quickly with the old test light, first of all, everything is going to be 12 volts. There's no reason it's not. But the green switch is what fires up this second bank of breakers, which goes over to those three items over there. Which means we've got three currently open. So I'm just going to wrap a wire around that, shoot it through the firewall, hook it into the fuel make it happener, That'll get us home, and then I've got to figure out a way. We're going to tackle this, try to pretty it up, or just leave it be, or what the deal is. But that way, we've got 12-volt switch, because I need to flip that to fire the starter. So I'll always know that I've got power to the digital choke before we go twist on it. I got sawdust in here, even. I've never seen such a thing. I bet this is just going to be blowing like crazy down the highway yeah got her just plugged in there run through a grommet right there now i just got to connect it on the inside and that is done and then i need to check if we have hood clearance for the air cleaner on this bad boy and that it still closes because it looks like it might be a little bit taller and i don't want to jam that through the hood oof da temporary fixes in I noticed in here, it's really hard to see, but there's some stuff kind of scribed in. Lights, coil, rug pin or something like that. I'm not even sure. And then he's, he's got an extra, I don't know. It's just, it's a different setup. It's going to take me a couple hours to just lay in under this thing figure out what in the world is going on well i think for tonight i'm going to go ahead and shut it down I'm gonna wheel around town try to find something on the rollers still you know at the gas stations get a few hours of sleep and then right away in the morning we should go ahead and get the new tires mounted on this and then we'll head over here and start working through the brakes and the rest of the fuel system here all goes well late afternoon we could be you know do we have gears does it move? That would be ideal. See you bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning. Day two with the beautiful light up blue. Well, I don't know where I'm at. Tijuana tires, I think? I don't know. I think you can order tacos whilst your tires are getting mounted. Highly recommended. Going to do that. Getting those Mickey Thompson front runners put on that I picked up yesterday. Going to find a gas station, get some coffee and breakfast, also known as beef jerky, and then head on over to the garage again and get started on the Chevelle. Okay, guys got both fronts bled and one rear. I think I got another bad wheel cylinder. We'll just pretend. You know, we got juice out of that one too. So we're fine. This is like 50% more brakes than I usually have. Big thank you to Joshua, not only for just helping me bleed the brakes, but also being an excellent steward of the Chevelle. He's taking good care of it. He put it in his garage for me and everything. So really appreciate that. Working on the concrete this time of year is, it's nice. Time to get the now matching kind of classic pattern, Mickey Thompson's. Up on the front, the nice thing is these are actually DOT. They're a lot heavier, but they have a much heavier sidewall, plus they're DOT, and they're going to do a lot better in the rain than like a traditional front rudder for drag racing. They don't really have any sort of tread on them. feel a little bit more comfortable with this. We are going to definitely be facing some adverse weather. Wind, rain, you name it. Don't have any wipers. We don't have inner fender wells. I've got some old ones over here, but I'm missing all of the hardware and everything that goes to them in the clips. 
I thought about just kind of scabbing them in with zip ties or something, but I don't know. We're going to have to try to keep the water out of the engine as best as possible. Let me think on it for a little bit, okay? Well, I think it's time a guy throws some ice cube juice back in this thing. Fire this up once again and let this thing run longer than, I don't know, 42 seconds. Going to try to slowly bring her up to temperature. Biggest thing for me is like head gaskets. It's nerve wracking. You know what I mean? We could fix that, but just the time and messing around and oof to may. Make sure we hold consistent oil pressure. Everything does the thing. Probably doesn't have a thermostat in it. We'll figure that out right away. But I need to get it to temperature also to start tuning this fuel make it happener. I think I pretty near got the floats just nailed yesterday when I I think I took a roll and a half out of each and then two out of the rear or something like that. But those look pretty decent today, but get this in here and we'll try to fire it back up. Oh, I'm spilling everything. Power's hot. I'm gonna jump in, see if I can bring some thunder. Gotta remember all these switches. Okay. Ouch. First thing third. Get some fuel pressure going. Okay. A couple shots. Oil pressure. Boy, this thing sounds good. Smoky, that's to be expected. It's definitely high compression, very high compression. Wow, this thing is, sounds so good. It's gonna idle. I need to turn that up quick. Fuel, less fuel. Slowly warming up. Can't see nothing. Gonna have to step outside for a minute. A guy is getting woozy. But it's slowly warming up. It's circulating. Carb is halfway dialed in. Enough to sit here and idle anyway. Like she's happy, just gonna let it come around. Long, long nap. Sounds great. been sitting here idling for, I don't know, 13 minutes, maybe 15. It's holding at 160, doesn't have a thermostat, so it's doing the cooling thing, which, that's nice. I'm gonna run to the back really quick and make sure that it's charged light, the charging whirler is doing the thing. I've cracked her really good a few times in that belt, for whatever reason, staying on. So that's good, on the charging whirler that is. 
Okay, how do you run this one now? Got lights and all sorts of stuff. Okay, I gotta make another run to the parts store here. It is not charge latent, unfortunately. I was flipping all the switches I could find. I thought maybe he had a field wire or something. So the alternator wasn't dragging during the pass. Some guys just do that, still do that. Not the case. Also, the brakes failed already. <laughs> I never got brakes. I'll show you what I mean by failed. Well, I thought, let me check the pedal out. I took that piece of wood off of there, by the way. Boom. Yeah, that's brake juice. And you could tell that it's bad because of the way that it is. So it's just blowing out the rear seal there. Remember yesterday when I said, let's go on ahead and order that brake master cylinder, eh? just in case. You're welcome. I mean, I'm not saying I was right or whatever, but we got it. So I'm gonna go pick that up. Probably some zebra stripe gum and a couple more Red Bulls. And get back at her. We need to be on the road, realistically, probably four hours at the latest. So we gotta start hustling here. Can you let's get some stuff done for Pete's sake? Well, I'm back with the new master cylinder. Eh? Very simple getting out. Just gotta loosen the lines here. Gonna shoot some juice on these fittings first, just make sure they back off nice and easy. And then we've got two bolts here. Sometimes the lock ring on the rod will come right out of the master cylinder. Eh? Other times you have to disconnect it from the pedal and then remove it out of here. We're just gonna give her a hard one-two pull, see if we can just disconnect the whole thing. Well, a guy typically always bleeds these bad boys right in the car. But I figured I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Just in case you don't want to do that, you can see the process. Got her up in this big old vise here. Clamp laid it down. And I'm just going to make some whirly woos. They're going to go right back into the reservoir. And I'll explain that process once I get these done. I'm just using this copper clad bendo light stuff. A little expensive initially, but if you do this enough, just throw these in your toolbox. And then when you do it next time, you got them. There, that's what this looks like. Now a guy can just tape these together with the adapter Rooney, throw it in your toolbox as a GM master cylinder. I'm gonna put some juice in here. Now, just like bleeding it in the car, instead of using the foot pedal and the rod, we'll find some other blunt instrument and Boy, that's on there. Jam it in here, push it in, wait a second, bring it out. And the reason we're waiting is it's gonna pull fluid in, push it through the pipe. We want the bubbles to get away from the pipe so when you release your stabber tool, it's just not sucking that air right back in. But basically, keep doing this, cycling it. You'll see the air bubbles subside. Good to go, bolt her up in the car. Let's see what we got. What do we, this thing probably work. All right, nice and slow here. There's those bubbles. All the way down. Bring her back. Of course, it's gonna pull some juice down because you're filling your pipes up, but trust in the process. See, air bubbles are getting less and less. Getting firmer on my bent ice pick hooker cotter pin extractor tool. Got her licked, very solid. And what I'm looking for is when I push this in, which I'll try to do with this hand, we're not seeing any bubbles there. See, it's just juice. So we should be good to go. Plop these off, make a mess. Actually, I might have the red adapter plugger offers that come with this initially. 
pop those in quick, then carry it over to the car as fast as we can, screw in the other lines, then I can worry about finishing bolting it up here, just so we don't lose a bunch of juice everywhere. Little side project here on the drinker side. Was feeling guilty about wrapping that wire around, so I put a fitting on it. And while I was there getting fittings, you know, the cheap go box, snagged up one of these guys. So I'm gonna zip tie this way up under there so a guy can charge a late on his computer pocket box for the jip system and the speedometer. And then we'll just ground it up in the dash there. Keep everything up out of the way. You can buy 48 foot phone cords now for some reason. And then we should be done with the wiring, hopefully. Charge boiler. This one's new. The core is $15 on that now. This is a little 55 amp, but look, it's what I could get my hands on. 39 amp at idle, 66 amp max. That'll probably work. We ain't got a lot of digitals. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's uh, pop this bad boy in quick, huh? Plan. Charging whirlers in, so let's fire it back up. I've been charging lighting on the battery in the rear and uh, see if we're getting more juice out of it this time. There we go, that's much, much better. It is officially time to see if it moves since I got a little bit of brake pedal. Fuel pressure is dropping. Oh, definitely got reverse. Yes, got a little nervous there for a second. I think we're good, I'm running out of fuel pressure. I might have to swap that pump. back there just struggling. Shoot. Uh, needs a steering wheel disconnect badly. I'm gonna drop the filter one more time. This looks incredibly clean, but we've been running it now for the first time in many years. Just make sure there's no restrictions here. And if there isn't, this is for sure dead blowing back and forth and everything else. It's just making a lot of racket. So I think it's just, you know, old. But we can get this out quick and thankfully I've got that other one we just picked up yesterday with the regulator. So, isn't that a 1316? Yeah. Oh, I can wash my hands while I'm at it here. There we go. Old pump later out. New one is in, gooped up the fittings even. Had to extend the uh, positive cable and I changed the configuration on the sad cable, put a different clip on it. El cheapo fittings, but you know, if it works, is it a dumb idea? Get a guy home and then we'll dollar up. You wanna hang your positive where it makes sparkles right next to fuel. Makes it an exciting drive. All right, let's flip around, see if we get pressure. Oh yeah, instantly. There we go. Okay. Got to find a wing nut. I got a push-in breather on the other side. Charger later changed. New paper filament, a little bit shorter. Probably work. We got two front brakes. Fuel pumps pumping. New front tires. I think I'm going to start loading stuff up. Kind of work through some small things as we go, but... The big stuff is done. I gotta try to fit everything in here. And I got some room back there, but I gotta work it past the seats if I can. 
which make it a little bit more difficult. Here I am, back at the airport, returning to Murcia Lago. I'm just kidding, I don't even know what that is. I think it's an Italian supper dish thing, but I had a Ford Ranger. Anyway, turned that back in on the way, went to O'Reilly's, dropped off my core charge, picked up some K-Seal because the uh, radiator leaks severely, turns out. <laughs> that's, that's also fine. And gonna get a ride back to the Chevelle. It's also raining cats and cows right now. Cleared up for a minute and then came back with a vengeance. Where do you, I've been doing, sir, I just came in over there. Passenger pickup. I don't think that's right. I'm gonna go over here again, I guess. Great. All right. Here we go. First time on the road. some great news and great news first of all why well, didn't get her fully wound up yet but it's about 2800 rpm at 50 ish but i think i get a few more miles an hour out of it it's probably got 411s in it i think this was a quarter mile car thank goodness weighing in the fives or sixes that's all i'm saying secondly's where are we on the third i can't remember it doesn't have a mini spool it's not Lincoln locked. It's got an actual, some sort of posi unit in the rear because I can t turn it in here fine, turn, turn it everywhere I'm turning. It's not dragging tires. That's good, very, very good. Made it to the fuel station. Still haven't figured out blankers. Don't think we got them, that's fine. Can't see nothing already. I did rain -X the glass. I might do that one more time. I wonder if I rain next the inside. Does that help with fog? I don't know. Maybe I should read the bottle. Anywho's, fill this bad boy up. 
get some beverages, wet the backpack. We gotta hit the road. We got some miles to put down. That's a pretty neat plate I got going on here. There we go. Gotta fill this guy up too. I have a feeling we're gonna be definitely chewing through the gas at 3,000 RPM. There's a Napa down the road somewhere I just found along the route. Swing in there and get some uh, anti fog. I don't think this is gonna, I don't think that's gonna do it for me. Did pick up an extra cheap old clicky clacky. We have miscellaneous stuff. Not really any hard parts. We don't have water pumps. We don't have any valve train stuff, rear gear stuff, any transmission stuff. I've got hand tools and fluids. So let's just hope this goes well. Well, that's not good. Guess I'm buying kitty litter here too. Can fill her to the top because it leaks for some reason. Great. Really needed that capacity. Turns out they got a uh, floor dryer or whatever, if you just ask. My assumption is, well, number three, the pump didn't kick off. So then I think it pushed it either out the original vent for return or the rubber O-ring seal on the fuel gauge sending unit, pickup to be return unit, the bob is shocked and just came out there. So I gotta remember, I should probably float her around well, two gallons less than that, I guess. Here we go, see if we get to Napa. Start from there. Made it uh, 150 yards. Pretty sure just blew a shock up. Tire is significantly rubbing. Can't, can't move. That's great. Let's just try to air it up. See what happens. Complete and utter garbage. It does, you gotta select pressures put here if it's flat. Yeah, it just, it doesn't do nothing. Barely moves it. I think I got it up. I got my hand in there anyway. Move some stuff around in the trunk. Gotta try to get to the snap, or maybe they got a foot pump or something. I don't know. Keep uh, heading down the road. We're not going to make it to auto parts store in time. Just going to have to keep looking for gas stations to stop at. I got both daylights. That's pretty nice. Got to do a little bit of a headlight adjustment. Can't see nothing. They're both kind of pointed to the center. I am fogging up real bad again, but great oil pressure, temperatures are good, engine is singing 3,000 RPM right now. Called one of the parts stores that was closing, he said, come here, they got air. <laughs> nope. Okay. You can see it's leaking down right sides lower leaks back there leaks a little back here I'm gonna rain X the glass again you can see how foggy it is I don't know if that's on the outside or what's going on here try to get the visibility in a better situation here some actual good news here I was worried about the engine sucking in water. I mean, we're getting a little bit up on the valve covers, which is where all that steam's coming from, of course, but it's uh, staying out of the air filter element, which is, you know, that's a little important. So first little rip, well, we're doing pretty good. Just found an online, you know, digital machine. Punched in all the info on this, and it keeps telling me 
I've got a 456 gear in this. 50 miles an hour, 51.2 something at 3,000 RPM. This is gonna... We might as well be driving a tractor. Yeah, I could probably push it a little bit more than that, but look, it was in a deep sleep. Don't let this thing come around, even 3,000. Moses. There's traffic behind me, I'm gonna pull over safely, let them go by. When there's not traffic behind me, I'm gonna fall back to 2,500 RPM. I'm not in a hurry. Personally, as long as we're chewing up mileage. But it's the visibility is what's kind of getting me right now. So, we're going to go as long as I can see, about 3%. Might have to shut down early. Actually, I should check the oil. Find some sort of, you know, White Horse Travel Lodge in or something. Motel 2.5. I don't know. Maybe they left the light on for me. Is what I'm saying. Grab some pizza. Hour and a half, we made it 19 miles. It's pretty good. Hunk of pizza. Charger cable. Well, I guess we're back on the road. Nothing's falling off yet, I guess. Can't wait to see this thing in the daylight, you know, without all the rain and, oh, that's just from when I was rubbing and tearing up the tire. Thankfully I have a spare. No, sure don't. Okay. Well, I'm back in civilization. Somewhere, I don't... I'm not sure where, but it was like a bat beacon in the air. Found me in O'Reilly. I've went to seven fuel stations. None of the air pumps work. So I've been on a bullet so hard I got gunpowder in my teeth. Picked up this guy here. It was not cheap. I'll tell you that much. It's probably going to become a birthday present or anniversary gift. You know what I mean? Anyway, this one hooks right into the battery. It says it'll get up to 150, doubtful very. Got some anti-fog for the windscreen because I can't see nothing. I'm going to dump some more juice into the engine. And then we'll keep uh, keep crawling. We are not making very good time, <laughs> fellas. I'll tell you that much. And it's getting to be rather cold. So when we break down on the side of the road... The risk of hypothermia is it's up there. That's, you know, I like to gamble. It's working. I'll be dipped. Look at that. All right. I got all the hair in quick. Did I let all the pressure back up? I think I did. I have to try to squeeze some fuel on this and just see usage versus overflowage spill cleanup time. And uh, try to calculate some sort of fuel mileage. I'm sure it's around 10. Small blocks usually get you know, 15, 14. But we got the rip them, it's ripping. So, and then. That'll let me start picking some waypoints as we go. Good news is it stopped raining, finally. So maybe my visibility will improve. Nope, definitely not. That's fine. 5.7 gallons. Now check it out. So, let's see, we've gone like 35 miles. What is that? Math. Six and a half, something like that. Six miles per gallon. That's great. So, I mean, at best. So I guess we'll stop like every 40, 50 miles. Yeah, I'll stretch a little bit anyway. Get another coffee. So, I'm gonna go in and get a coffee, speaking of that, and let's just do the thing. <laughs>
him over some kind of big passage kind of thing and had no brakes. Rear is completely gone, front is half down. And that makes no sense. I must have, I maybe popped a rear line or something, or that wheel cylinder just completely let go. Uh, but the front to be down on juice, I don't get that because we've got new wheel cylinders, new soft lines, and of course everything is wet, so I can't really discern what is what right now. So, I'm gonna fill her up with juice again and try to bleed these fronts. I think I got a little tool thing we can maybe try to use. I'm heating up this line so it can be pliable enough to force over this bleeder. Maybe get close. And then I'm gonna try to fill this little bottle full of fluid crack the bleeder open and that way I could try to bleed on myself as I pump just like when we did the master cylinder eh? it'll push juice in and hopefully suck juice back but eliminate the air if there is air in here something's going on kind of a weird trip today I've had thunder I've had lightning I had kind of sleetish it's uh, been a weird trip really sketchy on these I'll tell you that much right now well that's full but this is empty hang on no more juice this is full as well not the intended use of this look at that air bubble I got the bleeder cracked so I'm gonna go in here slowly press on the brake should push it in there should pull it back. I'm gonna go see what it's doing first though. There's some air. Well, did it work? Uh, eh. It might just be enough for me to sneak into town. My wife Jessica booked me a motel in Lexington. Where I'm trying to get to. I think I'm another hour away ish. I just wanted to push myself, get as far as I could. I've only, I think I've only put 150 miles down today. And it is, I mean, it's, the sun's gonna be coming up. But if we can get there, then we're gonna have part stores and everything else. Other humans, you know, that can, that would be. I hear cattle in town. Like it. Like this place a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna fire it back up. See if we can just ease the rest of the way in. Well, we did make it to the motel. <laughs> a long couple days, I'll tell you that much. I'm gonna go throw the old earth pounders up for a little bit, get a couple hours of sleep. See you in the morning. 43 minutes later, here I am. So, early this morning when I pulled in, the guy spent about 20 minutes undoing all the wiring and I mixed a bunch of stuff up. So, if someone tried to steal it, he's either gonna burn the rig down, melt all of the wires. Or just wreak havoc but even then I wasn't feeling very comfortable so like I usually do go up to the front desk and I asked the young lady you guys had any issues with car theft out here especially classic cars now not often but all of the time motels and hotels even Airbnbs say no never you're good relax you want a cookie or a muffin this young lady went, yeah. <laughs> In fact, if it's not right out front, it's gone. Hope you got insurance. So 
I don't think my eyes closed at all. None sleep. Not including all of the work I did yesterday. I drove about nine hours. We have made it about a third of the way. If that, 150 miles, something like that, 160 miles. I'd have to check. And we got a host of mechanical issues this morning. You know, namely, I need some sparkulators. It's missing real bad. I think I burned up a set. Sustained RPM, probably not the right fuel mixture. At least I hope that's what it is. It was missing terribly bad when we pulled in. Got to check that out today. Might have to change the heat range. Might have to change the gap. We are running the MSD with the Axels. Need a wider gap for that typically. Sometimes all the way up to 50. That's the thing. And then, you know, maybe brakes. There's none brakes. I got a right front, a hard right front. Nothing else. Brake pedal wise, just kind of bounces off the floor. And I might even change the oil today. There's a O'Reilly's. Oh, oh, thank you. Close by somewhere uh, a couple miles or something like that so I'm gonna load up head there I guess we're gonna post up there for half the morning and then if I'm doing the math right we've got an 18 hour drive somehow to do today yeah awesome I think the guy's got all the wiring put back hopefully didn't take a picture <laughs> that's fine at least all the wires are red I could have drank a beer with this guy I am gonna adjust the choke on this I'm gonna lean it up quite a bit it's uh, very, very fat from what I remember from the last couple starts. Looks like all the fuel's bled off. Great. And uh, we'll see if we can do a cold start this morning. Oil seems to be good as far as level goes. Fire it up. Come on, fuel. There we go. Here are a couple of shots. Right in the thunders. Nice. Oh yeah, choke is way better. All right, install some heats and then we'll get over to the parts store. O'Reilly's is across the street, but luck would have it. Yep. Okay. Don't mind if I do. Listen, we can come in here, get one of those small blue aluminum jacks. You know what I'm talking about. They fit in the car good. They got good reach, 18 inches. All right. Get a decent jack stand they're a sonix ripoff and then we'll go across the street to o'reilly and get the parts we need also was followed by a sheriff for about three miles then pull me over and just pass another one right here in the parking lot that's sure okay is that a cement mixer on sale 13 and 7 8. i got a little excited with the height Actually, that my fingers do the walking last night. Searched along the route. Listen, a guy's learning how to use the cellular phone. It's pretty handy. I've searched along the route. There's like a magnifying glass. That's what that does, I guess. Found this store. Went on the lines. And the interweb said that they had two of the wheel cylinders that I needed. So that's why I came to this store. We technically just went 13 miles towards home. Plus got the parts we need. Okay. They gave me permission. I politely asked, can I blow my car apart in the parking lot? I said, sure. So we're gonna do it right here. Try to get this wheel cylinder in quick. And I might even convince one of these young fellows to pump the brakes for me a little bit later. That would be, it's nice seeing people. You know, it's been a while. By the way, I think I made a mistake and called these center lines initially, but I have since figured out, well, yesterday, really, when I took the fronts off to go get tires, with how light they are. They're incredibly light, and also the bolt design, not like the nubs. These are actually Krager Super Tricks. Extremely rare, very sought after wheels. Really cool. If you're wondering how I came to the conclusion last night that this is leaking or there's a bad wheel cylinder well there's just you know a guy knows after a while messing with junk and also yeah there's that it's not supposed to do that 
And if we were to look on the back side of this wheel, this is an easy way to see, see how light these are? Yeah, that's, this is not, that's not normal. You can pretty much see every time I stop to get fuel. <laughs> pretty neat. No, not really, that's terrible. Okay, so, need to dig into this bad boy, see what's going on. By the way, air shock update, the hijackers. It didn't leak down last night. I don't know what, if it was just a fluke or we just had to get some air to get the seal sealing or what happened, but stock springs. Frame looks really good. That's what it's supposed to look like. Major blowout. I haven't seen something this bad since that one guy at Taco John's. This, you know, they're not supposed to look like that, but it did really clean it. Look at that. We just get some brake rejuvenation spray in there. We got shoes left. Just got to clean them up. I'm gonna leave all that alone. Just got to get that little devil out of there. Somehow got the line off without snapping that. That's pretty neat. Must be a rubbing issue back here. Old feller had some fuel line. Again, exactly what I'd do. I need to have a drink with this guy, I think. Any hoops. Wheel cylinders in. Oh, this looks really good. Got the shoes cleaned up. Plenty of life on them. Them are newer, actually, whenever they were last installed. Drum does not look bad. No big heavy ridges, anything like that. Got that cleaned up as well, so I'm going to slide that on. Get this fitting on. And I do have two wheel cylindrays. I'm contemplating just getting the other side done as well. Okay, again. Okay, again, getting some air and some old fluid out. I keep doing this till we see the new fluid. So John helped the guy out. John, thank you. No problem. Did you clock out for a break? No. <laughs> that a guy. We got pedal, lots of pedal. All four corners are bled. I think we're good to go. I'm gonna come in and get some spark lighters from you. Alright. Got her back down on the ground. I am gonna change the Earl really quick. Some of you might be thinking, well that was fast to change oil, but sat for a really long time. And then I used a diesel oil which has a little bit of a detergent in it. So it's gonna start bringing out all that sludge and slime stuck in the engine. I wanna drop that out obviously, put something fresh in. And also, it went through a lot of heat cycles. I mean, that oil must have been boiling hot. I ran anywhere from 2,800 to 3,500 repeatedly for like nine hours. So let's go ahead and drain that out. And then I'm gonna put different sparkulators in. I keep burning boots. And I had to keep rearranging these last night. This one was coming up this way. I brought this around and this one over here. So I picked up these shorter header plugs. They're not great spark lighters, but they're a lot shorter. So the 90 degree boots are gonna fit a little bit better. It'll get a guy home. And then we can address, you know, the situation, let's say. All right, let's get to it. I'm gonna say the soil's gonna be as black as my liver. From all the abuse we just put it to oh yeah look at that not a speck of metal great news got a little bit of an oil leak here it ain't tremendously bad maybe a little bit out of the fuel pump cover but I ain't gonna complain I'll tell you that much right now sparkulators actually look really good and the gap is wrong but i'm questioning taking the time to change all these it's a late morning already and we've got a lot of ground to make up hmm. <laughs> well the whole team and i took a vote i.e me re team 
and uh, we decided against it. Here's why. We're only a third of the way in. If my theory is correct, we have to change spark later. Now, we just got to do it again. I don't know. We ain't got some time. It farts and sputters and bangs at low RPM, but when you feed her the onions, clean it out. She's just fine. So I think we just auto clean. Also, I'm going to start putting more barium and B12 into the fuel mixture. Instead of one can, we're going to spice her up to two. That'll help keep the combustion chambers and the sparkulators clean. And now that we got brakes, maybe we can send it a little bit more. Just clean everything out. Yeah. Okay, I got to pack everything up again. My suitcase broke. I got to upgrade my suitcase. And we got to hit the road. Actually, fuel somewhere and then road. Suitcase upgraded. Yeah. Lots of room now. All right, now that we got brakes, I think. Oh, yeah. We can test the line lock out. See if that works. Got a bite to eat. There's a fuel station right here. Gonna fuel up. Let's get some miles down. Made it 16 feet. Fuel gauge is leaking on the windscreen. Great. Oh, I think I got her. Pump's running right now. All right. Back on the road again, again. Swung into O'Reilly's, two reasons. We got really wild, inconsistent fuel pressure. Gotta look at that. Started smelling oil, and then I have a valve train tick coming on pretty strong. I thought it might be a header uh, gasket leak or something first, or collector gasket, but it's definitely valve train. It was revving under under the hood a little bit, and uh, yep. Coming around. The good news is I have no idea what kind of lifters we've got in this thing, whether hydraulic roller or hydraulic flat tappet or solid or whatever. We're gonna have to try to figure that out now that it's piping hot. Also, yeah, we do have, in fact, a pretty big oil leak. We're dripping oil all over the ground and everything. So, crank snout seal, or the bottom of the timing cover there or something, but man alive. I switched to a thinner oil, and I'm, that's probably not helping the situation, but let's see if we can get all this figured out here. I see the fuel backed off. There's no, there's nothing blocking it. Is that loose right there? Okay, well, we got a loose fitting there. Screw cam loose there. Huh. I think we, I just need to do some general maintenance, is what needs to happen. Screws tightened again. That fitting's tightened up. Maybe that was the reason it was losing pressure. We'll find out in a second. This is kind of interesting. These are missing on both sides. And I think there's a story that goes with that. I was talking with the feller that worked with the old guy that owned this car, and I guess back in the day, he used to, he didn't have a trailer, so he used to drop the drive shaft, flat tow this to the drag strip, make a pass or two, drop the drive shaft again, and flat tow it back home. So obviously he had a, some sort of tow bar or some setup on the front here, and I'm wondering if that's why those bumper bracket bolts are missing on both sides. All right, I'm gonna scooch under here. I just want to verify that it's that front oil pan or timing cover seal leaking and nothing else that's developing. 
we might be able to put some snake oil in there to swell that up just a little bit. It's not going to stop it, but make it less of a mess until we get back home. We still got a couple hundred miles left. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, this has been boogered in multiple different times. And these El Cheapo Chrome, you know, they just never, they're never cast right or formed right. And they always seem to leak, but I'm going to try to snug up a couple of these oil pan bolts and these bottom timing cover see if those have vibrated loose it's a shaky old feller and it's just shaking everything loose so maybe we'll get lucky well i was able to snug up the half inch bolts on the pan and a couple of the smaller ones on both the timing cover and the pan and then i wiped everything up best i could all the drips and drops clean the pan up a little bit so we can kind of see how we're progressing here. Then add a, just a scoosh of oil back in her since we've been leaking a little bit. And I'll put some snake oil seal swell kind of stuff. By the way, K-Seal update once again worked. Radiator is not leaking anymore. Holding juice. That's great news. Okay. Yep, still barbecue hot. So I'm going to dig into the valve train here, see if I can figure out what's going on. Well, for Pete's sake, the key's in your pocket. Just accidentally found part of my missing problem. Completely my fault. I should have double checked, but last feller that put the sparkulators in didn't quite, you know, get them in, I guess. So I'm assuming yeah, they're all loose. So, we'll uh, take them all out, gap them, put them back in, and seat them. I guess I could just take everything off on this side then, right? Since we're going to be tearing into it all. Ouch. Those black pipes are really hot, whatever they do. Well, maybe I'm just panicking. I can't fit even 15 thousandths on any of these that are on what I would assume be the base. See how we've, we've got uh, intake opening. See, exhaust. I can't get anything in there. So, I don't know. Also very consistent. So maybe it's a solid doodabber. That would explain the high RPM. Be interesting to tear this engine down just to see what it is. Because it runs very well. Okay, back to the sparkulators. Gonna go ahead and gap these. I dropped my gap tool on the ground down there. I'll get that back up. I think I'm gonna open these up to 40. And also, looks like an old one was left in it. That one was never changed. So give me a couple minutes here. Gonna go through the sparkulators. Make sure it's all good to go. And then also check the fuel pressure again. So the guy was pretty close. This is obviously an old plug. So the old timer, the guy that was racing this, would have been using this R45. So it's at 38 for a gap. I was guessing 40. So I'm going to go and set all the other ones to uh, 38. But first, I'm going to go into this store and see if this one has any AC Delcos instead of these, whatever these are, Angicas. Uh, otherwise, I got to pick up one more of these guys. You know, so they're all the same. That would be neat. This side, clean bill of health. Gonna dig into this side. Snake oil should be done. Also added a little bit of oil treatment, thicken up the oil just the tackle. Pop this cover off, see what we got. Well, she's all back together and I did not see anything unusual in the discovery process on either side. So, I mean, Unless I really dig into this thing, pull the rockers, pull the push rods, pull the guide plate, try to see and to see the lifter, which I'm not going to be able to do because I'm blind as a bat and I ain't got the right light, we can't really discern what's going on. I have a hunch they're either solid lifters, which would make sense, or we're losing a lifter and the sound we're hearing is in the belly because it seems really consistent across here. It's probably more likely. So we'll probably just run it at higher RPM. The good news is we got a new sparkulators all the way around and then we're gapped up right 
everything's nice and tight. We're topped off, everything looks good. I'm gonna shut the hood, check fuel pressure. If we got that, we're gonna keep on putting miles down. That's weird. Developed a dead miss. Figured it was ignition. Got the snooping again. Pulled back this boot or that Kevlar. This thing is cooked. It was probably jumping to the header. Be surprised if it wasn't. Got to fix that quick. Be back in the road. Well, fellers, we made it back to the pole barn, another successful revival, this time in an old school drag car. All said and done, I did about 500 miles doing the back roads and avoid highways, and it's very misleading. Looking at the car, it's beautiful. You'd think it'd be easy, but it fought me tooth and nail. And then we had the intense wind, the downpours, that insane fog, couldn't see Nothing. We had the wild back roads we were taking. Even got into a little bit of mud. No brakes. And of course, breakdowns. But as you can see, we have a very solid platform to build off of now. She's got some integrity. Sky is the limit. This is where I need you guys. I don't know if I want to call it Independence 2.0. Maybe we call it something else. Paint scares me. Do we leave it? finally have a shiner on the channel or do we wrap it with something cool and protect this paint small block big block i don't know bleep bloop it down there in the comments and of course i'll be reading through those as soon as possible you guys have a safe and happy new year's and of course we'll see you very very soon